I really appreciate you making time for us today, uh, for filling us in on what's exactly going on. What a crazy show this has been today. Iran has the greatest victory ever. Israel's actually lost the war in Gaza. This is, I did not expect this. I did not expect any of this, but it this, will wait until BB don't make it World War Three. I would, uh, but but the, but there's also <laughs> a chance that, that BB could turn this into World War Three. There is a chance. I'm I'm not going to sleep well tonight. I, in fact, I I know what I'm going to be doing tonight is staying up, glued to the TV and glued to my damn cell phone, reading my Twitter feed because I'm very nervous about what's going to happen tonight. I hope we get through this. I hope there's no war and um and all that. But tonight's a very very dangerous night. Is there any leadership in Israel? that is not on board for starting world war three is there like if if someone let's for instance if, if bb disappeared somehow <laughs> um would like if the cia wanted to disappear him to stop world war three would that stop world war three no unfortunately when when i was in israel back in the 90s um they had a, a prime minister named yitzhak rabin and he was a man who um was pursuing peace. It's an imperfect peace. I've learned since then that Oslo wasn't everything it was meant to be, but at least he was talking about peace with the Palestinians and the potential of Palestinian state. He was assassinated uh, in November of 1995 by a right-wing Israeli fanatic who was loyal to Benjamin Netanyahu. You're seeing the pattern here. The, the assassination of Yitzhak Rabin brought to an end uh, what I would call the era of Israeli normalcy, where normal people could live, who wanted to live in peaceful coexistence. In 19, starting in 1995 on, Israel started absorbing hundreds of thousands of immigrants from Russia and Ukraine who viewed the Palestinians as subhumans, animals. They strengthened Netanyahu's hands. And since for the, for the next two and a half decades, Netanyahu has transformed Israel from a nation that once had rational thinking people into a nation that thinks just like himself. The, my, this is my way of answering your question. If you remove Netanyahu, you're going to be replacing somebody who believes the same things that Netanyahu believes. There's no good Israelis today. This is why I say Israel has lost the right to exist. I know that gets me in a lot of trouble, but there's no hope for Israel. Israel is an evil nation that populated by a people that have lost touch reality. When you have a population that views themselves as being superior to their neighbors, superior to the rest of the world, who believe that God has vested them with unique rights, um, I think it maybe it's time that they be divested of these rights and they be reinvited back into the mass of humanity. Well, you know what I realized when I was over there in Berlin is that uh, I went to the bunker. Uh, and anyway, but he referred to, they used to refer to themselves as the master race. Yeah. Well, now the Zionists refer to themselves as the chosen people. Yeah. Isn't that the same mentality? Same thing. There's no difference. Once you view yourself as superior, everybody else is inferior. They become less. Look, the Ukrainian nationalists do the same thing. They call Russians orcs um, and they view the Russians. This is how Stepan Bandera could motivate Western Ukrainians into slaughtering 110,000 Poles who were subhuman, slaughtering 200,000 Ukrainians, slaughtering 120,000 Russians because they were subhuman. And it's the same mentality that exists in Ukraine today. Anytime you have a nation, and this is why I always caution my fellow Americans to be careful about the God bless America notion. Because the issue, once you say that God has blessed us, does that mean God has damned the rest of the world? Is the rest of the world inferior? Our Ameri we believe in American exceptionalism. There's, a very, there's very little differentiation between American exceptionalism and the uh, Ubermensch or the chosen people. It's the same disease of the mind that says that somehow we are better than everybody else. We're not. We're humans. We're all equal. We're all, if you're religious, we're all created in the image of God, if that's what you believe in. All of us are created in the image of God. And, and yet, somehow we have these nations, the United States, Israel, the Western Ukrainians, the Nazis, the Japanese had this, all these nations that believe that they are somehow imbued by destiny to be world leaders at the expense of the rest of the world. It's a very dangerous mindset, a very dangerous uh, philosophy. Yeah, you know, when, uh, when I say God bless America, I mean just America. I don't want any of that going to Canada, and God forbid any of it going over to Mexico. <laughs> just for Mexicans. Just yeah. for us. It's just for just us. us. 
<laughs> okay. Yeah. All right, Scott Ritter, thank you so much again. It's uh, always a fascinating conversation and uh, appreciate your work and your insight. Thanks for coming on. Come see us on tour. We're going to be in Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania, Cortland, New York, Oakmont, Pennsylvania, El Paso, Texas, San Antonio, Texas, Vancouver, British Columbia, first show sold out, Denver, Colorado, Ashland, Virginia, Athens, Georgia, and Minneapolis. We're coming back to Minneapolis. If you couldn't get tickets last time, there'll be some available this time. We're doing two shows. Go to jimmydoor.com for a link for all those tickets. Mm-hmm.